Afternoon folks, so in this question here, uh, we're given an orthographic problem where we're given a pictorial view of an object and we have to draw in the elevation looking in the direction of arrow A and elevation looking in the direction of arrow B and a plan projected from the elevation. Usually sometimes I would put an arrow down there like that and call it arrow C. So it says here, the figure over shows pictorial view of component, photorealistic is given as well, elevation direction arrow A, end view or end elevation direction of arrow B, plan from the elevation. So as always, uh, I've kind of shaded in the colors here and I would always work out my overall measurements, my length, my width and my height, okay? So on this one here for arrow A, I can see the flat surfaces here I've shaded in red, which is this one and this one here. And then I'm also going to see this yellow curved surface here. I'm going to see this yellow sloping surface and this yellow sloping surface. The reason I've done these in yellow as always is because I can see them in multiple views, okay? More than one view. In the end elevation, I've done what I can see here in green. And then I can also see this sloping surface here, this slanted surface, this curved surface here, and also this curved surface here. And then in the bird's eye view, I can see uh, what's in blue. And then I suppose this yellow surface here and this yellow surface here. Uh, for the bird's eye view, I'd see this one as an edge view. And likewise with this curved surface here, I would see it as a curve, okay? Not the actual surface. So. Uh, just quickly, I'll refer to the model there. I have a model done up here on Onshape. So there is our uh, 3D pictorial. So if I was to look at the front view, as I was saying, I would see these two red surfaces, this one and this one. Then I would see this slanted, this sloped, and this surface here. So there's a surface I'd see. So if I look at them, there you go. That's what I'm going to see. Okay. So the two red surfaces, slanted surface here, this one here, or sorry, curved, slanted, and then this one here as well. Uh, if I rotate it around to the end elevation, this is what we're going to see over here. Two green surfaces. Then I've got this yellow curved surface, which we're going to see it as either a rectangle or a square. Kind of hard to tell there, but you'd see that curve anyway. Then we would see this slanted surface here. And then this curved section here as well, which we know is a curve, even though we're seeing it almost as a rectangle. Okay. But once again, we know it's a curved surface. And then for the bird's eye view, looking down on top of it, this is what we'd see. Probably flipped around the wrong way there. But we're going to see this curved surface at the top, or the, the sorry, quadrant. Then we've got this flat bit here, curved surface here, blue section, and then the slanted surface. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm quickly going to start that actual drawing and start putting in the elevation view. Now, I am not going to be able to put in this line because they do not give us the length of that at the start, okay? And we're probably not going to be able to find this exact point right here either, okay? So we'll complete as much of the elevation as we can, and then we'll move on to another view. Okay, so starting that there and now. Let's move out there. So there we go. So I'm uh, going to put in my various lengths. I've got 70 and 55 at the bottom. And then at the top, I've got 50, 25, 25, 25. Then I'm going to put in my various heights, 15, 25, and 60. And on this side, I've got 40, 15, 25, and 20. Okay, so there's a lot of lengths and a lot of heights. So starting off with the elevation at the very bottom, I'm going to mark from left to right. I'm going to mark my 70. And then a little bit more evident at the top, I think it is 50. Then 325, so 75, 100 with 25 left over. And then I've got heights on the right hand side, which I'm going to mark from the 5 mark, just because my visualizer is getting in the way up here. Okay, I've been sliding the T square up, so from 5, I'm going to mark up 40, so 5 plus 40 will bring me to 90. Okay, then I've got 15, and after the 15, I have 25, 10, 20, 25. And probably have 20 left over yet. So that's my heights put up on this side. I'm going to put up my heights on the left hand side. So I have 15 and 25. 90 is already done for us because that one should match up. This mark here should match up with this one. And 60 left over. Okay. So all my lengths are put in and all my heights. So for my first height, I'm going to put this one in. I'm just going across here like that. Then I'll put the 40 in. And I'm going to leave the other heights just for a minute, okay? This one here, 15 and 25, just for a minute, okay? Now I'm going to put in some lengths, okay? So to get the red section here at the front, the little rectangular box, I've got that there now by projecting this up. Now I'm going to project down this 51 because that is where the curve section is. And now with this 25 here, I'm just going to bring that down. And then I'm going to bring this one down. And likewise, I'm going to bring this one over 
this one over. Okay, so in this section in here, roughly in here, this is where we're going to have this red surface, okay? So from the 50, you can see it comes over 25, and then it comes over another 25 for the curve. So our R here just says R for radius. That radius, if we match it up, okay, you can see the kind of mark there. It's going from here to here, the length of it, okay? That means the radius is 25. So that means from here it's down 25, and from here it's in 25. And luckily enough, they've actually given us those measurements, because look, from the top section here, it's going to line up with this bit here. We've already marked down 25, and from this section, we've already marked in 25. So that means our center point is actually going to be there. So from here we marked in 25, and from here we marked down 25. So I'm going to heavy in some detail there, and we'll put in that curve. So this red section here at the front, going to start putting in that. Just heavy these in once again. I'll be able to heavy in this line the whole way across, like that. Won't know the exact point here just yet, so I'll just put a little circle on that. So I won't be able to get this edge. Be able to put in this, and I'll also be able to put in this. And then we're also going to see this guy here, this curved line, okay, which we'll see is a straight line. See as much of that as I can there. And then we're going to be able to put in this, okay? So that's kind of our elevation that we're going to be able to put in. So to heavy those in, here is the red rectangle at the front of it. I'm going to heavy this the whole way across, actually. Going to heavy this section in the whole way up. Maybe this one in up to here because that's the height of the platform. That arm was 40 millimeters high, which is what I mean by platform. I mean the blue surface here was 40 millimeters up from the ground. And the reason I could heavy that line in the whole way up from the left hand side is because this bit went up here. Even though this is a slanted surface, it's still on the same face, so it goes straight up. Uh, we don't really see this, but we do see this edge continue up, okay? We probably are seeing it, but we're not seeing it. We're seeing it as a point, that kind of line there. That goes straight up, and then I'll do this one across to the 50. So this is going to come across 50. So there. Now, at this point, I'm going to heavy it, this section, down just a little bit. And you can see how far it comes down there. Do that bit in there. Do this bit here. And finally, get this little section in here. There we go. And now I'm just going to put in my curve really, really quickly. So just get my compass ready there. So using this as a center point, out to here is my radius. Just line it up first of all. Just check that it's all matching up. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So there we have that. That is as much of the elevation as we can complete right now. I'm not able to find this moment in time, this point here, to connect that line. And I'm also not able to find this point here, which I would be able to heavy in this line as well. Okay? So I'm not able to heavy in those just yet. So that's why I didn't shade in this surface, even though that's the one we see. I was only maybe able to shade in about that much of it there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue on and we're going to start with our end elevation, which is this guy here green surface is what I'm going to see and from this one I will be able to see this because we are given the width going across here so I'll see this green surface this yellow surface I'll also see this guy and I should also see this yellow surface as well okay so that's what we're going to start putting in there now so any widths that I have I'm going to put them in so my end elevation uh, my widths at the bottom are 50 and 35 so 50 reading from left to right so that's my first width on the bottom. And I've also got widths at the top of 15 and 20. So 15 and 20 would be 35 with 50 left over. So that's all my widths. My heights are already put in. So I'm going to bring the heights across. And this section here, probably don't need that one. I'll bring it across just to there anyway. This line here, I'm going to bring it just about to there. And then the other height is already brought in. And, oh, I forgot one width, actually. Sorry, at the very front, you can see here, this bit here is 25 millimeters out, okay, from this section. So 25 out. So I forgot one width. That's 25 out there. And at that point there, that's going to be a line going upwards. 
from here to here and then this one is going to go from there to there and here's the 50 one it's going to come down here and this one here really really important this one's going to mark down to here and i'm going to connect a diagonal line just check on that 15 down 25 yet I'm happy with that there's that diagonal line so i'm going to start having in this information now so this whole bottom line is going to be heavy this line all the way up here on the right hand side is also going to be heavy i'm going to start by putting in the green surface and the platform so this green face here and this face here so here's the green face which is over the 40 or 35 millimeters i should say and that's going to go heavy out to here because as you can see it's going to go heavy as far as there and then go down at an angle and that measurement there is 15 which was 15 in which gives me this point and that's the angle it goes down at so green face in yellow face in yellow face green face now what i have to do is i have to put in this green little rectangle here with this yellow one i'm going to see the curved surface as a flat surface okay going upwards there's the green face there there's the yellow one sitting on top of it and what's very important and where some people often make a mistake is they input a heavy line here where a curve meets a flat surface okay it's tangential it's not going to be a heavy line okay so don't make that mistake now we're also then going to see this line going up which i have going up here and then it's going to come out 50 so it's going to come out to the 50 and then down so that's our end elevation completed we're fully able to put that in just check for any hidden detail no i'm happy with that so what I'm going to do now is I have the elevation almost done, end elevation fully completed. I'm going to move on to now my plan view. And for my plan view, I'm going to see this curved surface here at the top. I'm just going to have a radius of 50 starting in the corner. And I suppose I'm going to see all of this here, this section. Okay, this coming around here and this bit. Okay, so for the heavy, all that detail in there. And from the plan then, I should be able to determine this guy and this guy so i'll put two little question marks beside them okay they're the ones we want to find so lengths and widths i'm going to transfer them down so any heights i have sorry lengths i had i'm going to bring them down so this one going to come here all the way to the bottom this one i'm just going to transfer to about there so i'll bring down a little bit further this one down to there and i should bring this one down a little bit further there we go so there's all my lengths brought down in one go now i'm going to transfer any widths i had so the outside one was done so i bring this one all the way down here's the 50. here's the 35 at the front and then the 25 for that section there so any widths i have bring them across so i'm going to start off by putting in i'm just thinking here i might actually put in the curve okay so you can see this bit here so that was the actual curved bit at the top, the flat surface. So that's going to come across here. And what's important to note is the center point of it, okay? So the center point is here in the back corner, okay? Remember a bird looking down, here it is. So that means that's where the center point is, right there. So straight away, I'm going to get my marker to heavy in my detail. Hopefully this works out. It should be equal. But this is my center point and my radius out to here because that's the width of it or the length of it in this case and the width of it here. So I'll just mark it to check first to there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's after working out. So there's my curve drawn. Okay, now I'm going to heavy in this edge and this edge to complete it. This edge is actually going to go heavy there and continue down. And likewise, on this side it's going to go heavy here then it drops down it goes all the way over here and all the way to the front so this is actually going to go heavy all the way to the front okay and now the next bit that i'm going to bring across is it comes down here 35 millimeters okay so that green surface there which was here so when that came down i'm going to transfer that across that means it's going to go heavy down to there okay and then we know looking down on top of it i have this surface here 
I'm going to see this line here, which I'm going to see is a continuous line because it's a one face, it's a flat surface, and that's going to go at an angle all the way over here, connecting to this red face. So from the green face to the red face. Red face is here. That means it's this point. I'm going to connect those up like that. Okay. So once again, heavy that in. So there's that face done. And just, just that there, ever so slightly. There we can see it, okay? And now, then, we know the red face is going to come all the way to the front of it. So there's the outline of our shape. Now we just have to put in the rest of the details. So I'm going to get in this blue surface, this yellow surface, and the other blue surface, and it will help us hopefully find this line as well, okay? So I'm going to focus on this blue surface and this yellow surface. So I know the width of it is here. Okay, that was the width 25. So where that is, I'm going to transfer that across. And that will come across all the way just as far as here. And what's helpful to us here is it actually determines. I'll heavy this in. That's where the curve section is here. Once again, we don't have in this line. And here's the blue bit. Okay, you can see the way it arcs in there a little bit. It's just kind of arcing in there. We're after finding now this point here where this edge meets this yellow face, curved face. And it meets it right there. So where we found it there, what can we do with it? Bring it up to our elevation. And now I can heavy in as far as there. That's telling me how far that face is coming in. So there we go. Got that bit there now. And the next little bit is we have to figure out, I suppose, where this edge is down here. So that edge right there, which was here in our end elevation, bring it down where it comes down. I'm going to bring it across. And once again, heavy in that line. That is identify the point to me right there, which is the one with the question mark. This point here, I found it in my plan. Now I want to find it in my elevation. So transfer it up. And it hits right here in my elevation. So there you have it. There is the diagonal line that I was missing at the very, very start. Okay. So that's the actual question completed, guys. Very quickly, just going to refer to my model. Okay. We're going to start off with the elevation. Have a look. Does it look the same? So just come in here. So elevation. There's my surfaces. There's that kind of line there that I was on about. And this point right here that I want to find that point there. And this line here. Okay, really important. Found those, so we'll just go back to our model and check it. Yeah, that's looking the same. Happy with that. Found this point and I found that line. Now we're going to check the end elevation. Okay, so I'll quickly go in there and have a look at that. Oh, sorry there. Uh, just trying to hide this guy, sorry. There we go. So the end elevation, rotate it around. And there we go. There is the green surface at the front, this little bit here. That section there got this kind of slanted surface here so just to check on that yeah I'm happy with that and then the bird's eye view the plan view and I think just the way I have it twisted here it'll probably look a little bit different but we've got the curve section here this bit connected onto it which helped us find here and then obviously the slanted bit so just go into that there now the bird's eye view yeah it's after rotating around it doesn't matter um there we go I'll just bring it around this way there we go, okay? Curve section at the top. That point we found right there where the face meets the other face, okay? And then this point here we are projected up. So that looks correct as well, so I'm happy with that. So that's the question done, guys. I hope you found it helpful. That's it complete.